Partner is a slang for an online um, entrepreneur, somebody who sells things online. I'm a proud mama um, that is learning about e-commerce. And in just under three months, I'm going to be launching my very first online business. Um, I chose the word e-mama or mama to celebrate the fact that in Aotearoa, New Zealand, many entrepreneurs are women, um, they are mama or mums like myself, many are successful, safi, sassy, incredible and inspiring. So nera te mihi kia koutou. Um, so how did I get here? Recently, I was awarded a $7,500 scholarship from Te Whare Huka Huka to be part of the Kahau i Te Ao e-commerce program. And Te Whare Huka Huka is the house of innovation and is an indigenous social enterprise with the vision to improve the lives of 10 million indigenous people. Isn't that incredible? 10 million indigenous people. And just as a side note, on Sunday night, Sunday just gone, I was on a Zoom with 200 stud- over 200 students, students of the Kahau i Te Ao e-commerce program that was run by Te Whare Huka Huka. Incredible. But as I mentioned, um, Te Whare Huka Huka creates innovative learning experiences for Indigenous community leaders. And they do that by helping with strategy writing governance, um, creating efficient and um, communi- communication strategies and clarity around what to focus on in a business. The e-commerce um, Kahau i Te Ao is an, a 12-week e-commerce program and this year 2021 there was an opportunity to um, to win a scholarship there were five comfort challenges and last week I talked about those five comfort, comfort challenges and it was about being comfortable being uncomfortable and I had to create a video of myself speaking about what I learnt for each of the challenges, do a video and then share it on social media and tag Fano in that are going to help me along my journey. And over 2,000 people applied for the scholarships and over 200 of us completed all of the challenges and that was for various reasons. Um, I and um, valid reasons. So just a reminder that I'll be here for the next three months. Every Wednesday, 9 to 10, you can download the Arrow FM podcast app to listen to this on your device. Um, YouTube, just put in the search engine Arrow FM. Um, This is also on the Arrow FM Facebook page and Wairarapa TV. So if you are interested in entrepreneurship and specifically e-commerce, um, then this, this show might be something that you're interested in. But um, today we're diving into the, ver- the very first co-papa, the very first topic that we've learned as students in the program, and that is to do with the mindset. And At a very simplistic level, the mindset is a set of beliefs that shape how you make sense of the world and yourself, but those mind, the mindset um, influences how you think, feel and behave in certain situations and um, mindset is the foundation of successful entrepreneurship. One of my idols is Elon Musk and um, he is the CEO of SpaceX and a multi-billionaire from South Africa. He is an electrical, uh, electromechanical engineer, a pilot, an investor and a founder of multiple businesses. And he set up um, Tesla, who created the first electronic car. And I listened to Elon, I listened to a video of him this morning. 
and he talked about the importance of having resilience, um, the importance of being fearless. And he said when he set up Tesla, he didn't know if people would want electric cars or even if it was going to be successful. But he said something really quite profound, that it was so important for him that he was willing to give it a, a go. So that's about not 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 knowing if something is going to be successful and being fearless and um, so today we're going to unpack a few things in relationship to mindset there's four key things um, what types of mindsets are there so I'll talk about two key or main main kind of mindsets and then if we have my, a mindset that is limiting, that limits us. There are ways that we can change those mindsets or our mindsets. And But what I'm going to do is that I'll share a few ways that you can change your mindset and then um, and ask you a few questions. These are things for you to think about so you know what's my, what's, where's my mindset at? What is um, barriers or limiting me from actually achieving my my um, my goals and my aspirations? And um, then we're going to talk about programming. And so programming, think of a computer. You get a brand new computer. It's got no information on it. And you start to like um, download apps on it. You might download um, the Word um, suite on it so you've got Word documents, Excel and all of those things. You might download Outlook on it and and so the computer starts to um, have um, information on it and it's stored in the computer and they t um, according to um, Scientists and those that have studied um, the mind and, and the very first formative years of our life, which is from one to seven, they say that our programming that we have happens, or the downloading and the beliefs and the attitudes that we have as adults, it all takes place from ages one to seven. And But there are ways that we can reprogram. So if you've had bad experiences during that one to seven year um, period, there's ways that you can actually reprogram. And so those are some of the things that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I am, before we get into our corridor, I'm just going to, um, I want to plug a program. Um, my brother has recently returned from Australia. He is an incredible musician, um, a singer, a kapahaka tutor, and um, he has partnered, partnered with Reap Wairarapa, and they are delivering a program, and it's called Waiata with Kipa, Te Reo Māori in Action, and it starts on the 17th of October. And so it will be a Sunday Waiata sessions, and you'll learn about Te Reo Māori, um, learning about harmonies, if you want to learn how to um, sing in harmonies, pitch, um, so and notes and singing in a group. So if you're interested in that, go down to Rep Upper. They're at 340 Queen Street, Masterton, or you can call them at 06 377 1379. Um, but before, oh yeah, so just a, rem a reminder, Waiata with Kepa, if you want to learn Te Reo Māori in action, if you want to learn about singing, harmonies and pitch, then you want to be part of that course. Okay, um, before we dive into our kaupapa today, which is about mindset, um, we're going to clear the path for this kōrero. In Te Ao Māori, we talk about clearing spaces, and um, we're going to clear the the way for our kōrero today through a waiata, a song that was written by an incredible musician, um, te reo Māori advocate, and his name was Hirini Melbourne. And the song is called Pūria Nei, and Pūria Nei means to cleanse or re renew, and be what a beautiful way to start our day.
That was Puria Nabe, written by the late Hirini Melbourne, and it means Puria Nabe means to clear space and to cleanse and renew. And we do that through the, the sun and through the winds. Um, for those that have just joined me, my name is Sophronia Smith, and I am. Um, you're listening to Mama Epreneur Under Construction. I'm here every Wednesday 9 to 10 for the next three months and I will be talking about e-commerce. I'm a student of the Kahal Ite Ao program and I'll be sharing what I learn in the program. Um, so on Sunday, Sunday just passed, we officially started the Kahal Ite Ao program the very first module of the program um, was mindset, or is mindset. And I, as I mentioned before, a mindset is a belief that orients the way that we handle situations. So, for example, two people can be given a task to do. One will head straight in it, into it, and one will and maybe stuff things up a little bit. Um, the other one might think, oh... I might get it wrong. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to fail. So I'm not going to try. I try. I'll wait for the other person to see what they do, and and if that's successful, then I, I might do it. Um, but what determines that behaviour is our our mindset. Our mindsets helps help us spot opportunity, but they can also trap us in self defeating cycles. So once again, think of two people just as talented as, as each other, but one goes ahead and pursues developing their gifts and meets coaches and meets other people who excel in the area that they want to excel in. The other, however, is worried about perfection or criticism, not being good enough and so hides and maybe stays at home and, and sits on their talent. And so we start to see how mindset affects us every day. And But we also see how important mindset is. Our mindsets can be a barrier to learning. And I'm learning about being an online entrepreneur and I want to be successful. I want to be successful, and but no matter what I learn, if my mindset has limiting beliefs and I haven't worked on rewriting and rewiring the subconscious programming, so I talked about the programming that we do on the computer, the downloading, and but if I haven't um, worked on rewriting those limiting beliefs, no matter what I learn, I'm always going to have barriers and I will never be able to reach the, my fullest potential. So there was, um, there is a Dr. Carol Dweck and Dr. Carol Dweck talked about two types of mindsets and talked about um, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And a person that has a fixed mindset, they will potentially avoid challenges and so they might say, I can't do things, I'm a failure, people are going to laugh at me if I try that. Um, they might give up easily, I'm never good at, and that might be because they say, I'm not good at anything, I won't pass that test or I won't get into that, t that team, so I'm going to give up now. Yeah, I might as well. I might as well end now. Um, they see effort as fruitless, or it's not going to bring about anything good. And they might have the thinking, "I don't know if I should try. I never win anything anyway." Um, they will ignore useful negative feedback, and they might say things such as, "I'm not going to listen to any feedback." They don't know what they're talking about. They're just being critical. And um, they might feel threatened by the success of others. And because if a person succeeds, it means that they feel like a failure. Oh, I'm not as good as that person. Or if another person succeeds, then there is pressure for them to just do as well. 
and so that is a fixed mindset and then we have a growth mindset and a person with a, a growth mindset they will embrace opportunities and um, so uh, they're given an opportunity and they will say, I'm just going to go for it and I might make some mistakes, um, but I'm going to learn from those mistakes and I'm going to get better and better, but I'm going to be really good at this. They will persist in the face of setbacks. And I talked about Elon Musk at the, Musk at the start of um, this corridor and he talked about um, um setbacks and you know and being sturdy and resilient and the person that has um that think that is persistence in the face of setbacks they might say yeah I stuffed up a few times quite a few times actually but I'm getting better and better each time and I'm not giving up and I'm going to be good at this but also, if we go back to what Elon Musk said, this means so much to me that I'm willing to give it a go. Um, a person with a growth mindset, they will see effort as a path to mastery. So if we want to su succeed, I need to put the work in. I need to have laser focus and I need to master this. They don't think, oh, that person just won just because they, they they've got rich parents they're just lucky the probably the person that you're like let's say you're competing against somebody and and they won perhaps what it is is that they had training they trained every day they had incredible coaches that taught them incredible strategies the thing is that you can as well so effort is a path to mastery and um Another thing for a person with a growth mindset is that they learn from criticism and um, and it's about saying I can learn from this criticism, I'm work in progress, um, the criticism isn't about me personally as a person, it's about what I'm doing and I want to learn everything that I can do to be the best at that thing that I'm doing and so I'm going to take that criticism or that feedback on board and the last thing is that they will find lessons and inspiration in the success of others and look at them and think what are they doing what can I learn from them and what am I going to apply in my own life um, and as I looked at and as I thought about those two mindsets so fixed and a growth mindset I started to ask myself where I sit am I uh, do I have a growth or do I have a fixed and I also started to ask myself what beliefs might be my obstacles that cause me to respond in a certain way and what beliefs need to be rewired and um, this brings me to my next point which is reframing so refra reframing the past um, is an easy way to change the future and reframing is about developing a new way of looking at a situation or an experience and putting it into another frame so for example um, if a relationship fails and that happens that's life relationships sometimes fail and sometimes they succeed and it can make a person feel like they are a failure and a way that it can be reframed is that the re that a person can think well the relationship didn't work but I really learnt what I want in a partner and the person that I was with helped me to learn that so it's about reframing right now I want to ask you a, a set of questions you you and you think about them think about them right now or during, during this the day and be aware of how you respond how you, so the first question is how do you respond to constructive criticism so have a think about that what I've learned personally is that Constructive criticism isn't about me as a person. It's not saying you're a bad person, Sophronia. It is about the thing that I'm doing. The thing that I'm doing, it needs a bit of work, a bit of tweaking. 
and but as you tweak you're going to be excellent the second question that I have is do you avoid responsibility for your problems or your failures by making excuses or blaming others and as I thought about times when I've done this and I've done this and for me it was about saving face it was about me um yes yeah, saving face and not wanting to say I didn't know I didn't know what to do um and some people they want to blame others because they don't want to come across as weak or un incompetent and they honestly don't think that um what they've done is is their fault and so it's really important that we um look at the um the where we sit what do, do, this doctor talked about is that sometimes we can sit in both spaces so we can um, maybe start in the fixed and move to a growth or for some of those things that I talked about we might be uh, might have a large number of growth mindset um, attitudes or we might and we might have one or two fixed ones and as I thought about it myself I identified that a number of my, I sit, I do sit in the growth attitude, um, and but if I was to ask myself where I sat maybe ten years ago, that would have been different. So I think it's come through my own personal gro growth, me working on myself, me trusting in myself, and me knowing that I'm at a stage in my life where I'm going for things. If I want to do something, I'm going to be good at it, and I'm going to learn, and I'm going to just go for it. What I also realize too is because I'm conscious of my mindset and the thoughts that, you know, that can come in and out, I might actually start in the fixed mindset and then challenge myself and then shift to the growth mindset. And so that's the importance of actually being really, really aware of, um, of, of your mindset, of your attitudes, of your beliefs, of those things that actually um, can hold you back. And on that note, we're talking about um, being a winner. I'm going to play another another waiata, and it's a waiata called called Winner, and it's by Ria and featuring Spawn. Now, Rhea, you know I feel you on this one. You keep winning all the way. Thing. You keep winning all the way 
the shame on you, shame on you. I see them faking. You don't need them anyway. But why they hating? Cause they're only in the way. They try to hold. I accidentally stopped myself from um, stop that uh, that track halfway through. So sorry about that. Sorry, Ria and Spawn Breezy um, for for doing that. Um, that now, Ria, you know I feel you on this one. You keep winning all the way. Okay, I just want to make sure that I'm doing things right. I'm still learning and yeah, I think I got things right now. Okay, so just want to apologize that I accidentally cut that song in half. Um, but want to, the reason why I chose that song is that it's got some really powerful words and it talks about being a winner and, um, it kind of aligned with today's, um, discussion, which is about mindset. And, um, for those that have just come in, my name is Sophronia Smith and you're listening to Mama Epreneur Under Construction. I'm here every Wednesday 9 to 10 for the next three months and I'll be learning, I'll be teaching or sharing um, about e-commerce and today's Called it all is about mindset. Um, just another reminder that you can download the Arrow FM podcast app and listen to the program on your device at your own leisure. Today's called it all, as I said, is about mindset, and I've just talked about a fixed and growth mindset. A fixed mindset can be an obstacle to learning, and reframing is a way how we can create a different future. The next thing we're going to start talking about is programming in the brain. And so programming is takes place in the first seven years of our lives, the formative years of our life. The programming occurs from language we hear. So we might hear things such as, we never get ahead. We, we are winners or we always fail. Program occurs from the behaviours we see. So, for example, you might see the avoidance of confrontation. So then what is being programmed is that confrontation is bad. Another way programming takes place is from the environment that we're raised in. So think of the home that you were raised in. Was it an environment where you were praised for anything you did or were you criticized for everything that you did these all impact and inform and shape programming the beliefs influence um, the beliefs that influence and de determine the decisions we make are informed by those first seven years and 95 percent of our behavior comes from the subconscious so programming actually takes place at a subconscious level which is just below below the, the conscious level so if you think about your behaviors and the decisions that you make in your beliefs they've been informed by the very first seven years of your life and there's a really interesting theory and um, this theory says that goes to the extent that poor people are taught the beliefs from their family and so if we think of programming that takes place from years one to seven and but it actually takes place when you're in the puku so for mama we know that we carry our babies in the whare tangata or in the, in the um, and and programming starts then because our pepe, even though they're growing, um, they can hear and they can sense everything. So actually, learning begins then. But poor people are taught by the beliefs from their family. And they're taught those things because they might hear the things or hear these, this kōrero. You can't make it. Life's a struggle things are hard and those beliefs are downloaded into the subconscious just below the conscious and so what happens according to this theory 
if you if what has been downloaded into your subconscious is all of those beliefs I can't make it life's a struggle when opportunities arise for you to actually make it so it might might be an opportunity to create a business or to um, take on a new role that is going to create six figures or more the theory is is that you will sabotage self-sabotage meaning not take the opportunity because what you've told yourself and what you've been programmed to think is that I'm always going to struggle so what's the use and the theory is that that is why poor people stay poor and rich people stay rich. And you will see from the statistics that generally poverty is a intergenerational thing. And then wealth is also an intergenerational thing. So that's just something for you to think about. But the things that you like, so we're going to the next step. So we're talking about programming and then for yourself the things that you like they come into your life or because what has been downloaded and programmed in that first seven years supports those things but on the flip side you can look at where you are struggling so let's say that you're wanting more money and but you so far you've got to maybe let's say that you're making thirty thousand dollars and you want to go to fifty or even seventy thousand dollars and you can start reprogramming that subconscious and the um to yeah reprogramming it so that it supports that Okay, so the things that you want can occur if they're not part of the programming that has already taken place, but that does take re reprogramming. And be that's because the subconscious, which is just below, below the conscious level, can learn new things. And I'm going to talk about two ways that you can do this. And this is very, I'm going to talk about two very simple things. And there's layers to this. And if you want to know more, you can either go to YouTube, um, go down to the library or um, look at, uh, maybe look getting an ebook um, about hypnosis and repetition um, so I want to share an experience, a personal experience, because what I'm sharing with you, it actually works. And I know it works because I've applied it in my my own life many, many times. Um, about a year and a half ago, I decided that I was going to buy a, a house. I'm a single parent and it is we have a housing crisis and right now, the cost or the price of houses is inflated and it's incredible when and, and so but I started to create affirmations on my cell phone and I got this loop program this loop app and what it would do is that it would play it over and over and over again and I would play this and I wrote affirmations and I put them around the house and I carried this card and I on my my affirmations it said something very very sim simple I am so thankful and grateful now I have bought a home and mastered and that it was is within my budget and as time went by, I started to clarify that even more, started to say how many bedrooms I wanted and all of those things. And I would listen to that and I put it down so that I couldn't actually hear. And one of the things that I've been taught by one of my teachers is that way it is actually going into the subconscious level. It's not going into the conscious level because I can hear it, the, the subconscious level. Um, and... Um, about one and a half years later, 
this is me going to um, looking at hundreds of homes, going to at least four to five open homes nearly every week, going online and um, having to, you know, work through the 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 corded or from agents they say oh with your your budget you might you you will only be able to buy a flat and I didn't let what they were saying define my dream and um, I eventually did buy a house and some people like say how did you do it and for me a lot of it was about reprogramming and it was about um, repetition, and it was about that um, we call you. Some people call it hypnosis, or feeding and rewiring the programming at the subconscious level. Um, so, what I'm actually talking about, I know that it, it actually works. But it actually takes time and we don't always find, see the results straight away. And I remember when I first started trialing this and just little things and I thought, oh gee, it's not working, nothing's happening. And um, then I would listen to different um, speakers, Dwayne, Wayne Dwyer, um, Wayne Dyer, sorry, Dr. Wayne Dyer, the late Wayne Dyer, um, Louise Hay, and others, um, and they would say that sometimes it takes time, but be persistent. Um, so, right now, I'm, what I'm I've shared a quarter all about me, or a story from my own experience. Now we're going to talk about you. And what I want to do, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Once again, these are questions that I want you to be asking yourself. What are the beliefs that you have that are sabotaging your progress to be either a world number one bodybuilder or a entrepreneur or a world number one selling um, author, you know, there are, whatever your goals are, whatever your goals are, whatever your dreams are, what beliefs are there that are sabotaging your progress to achieve that? And some of them, and, and some of the most common sabotaging, self-sabotaging beliefs are that you're not good enough, I'm scared, I'm not intelligent enough. What if I fail? I never succeed. So those could be some of the the um, the programming that we have. Um, so you think about that and you start to start to identify what some of those things are. If we talk, if we look at money, and let's say that you have a goal to um, to make two thousand dollars a week. Excuse me. Let's say that you want to ha you have a goal and you want to make two thousand dollars a week, and or two hundred dollars a week, and you could s um, ask the same question. What is one money belief that is holding you back? And it might be once again, um, I'm not intelligent enough to create that, you know, an extra $200. I'm not good enough. I don't know what to do. Um, but there's a, a number of beliefs. So ask yourself those things. Another thing that... Um, in terms of money beliefs, uh, some of the things that people might say to them is, I'm not good enough to be rich. My family was poor and so I will be too. It is just the way that it is. I don't deserve to be rich. I don't deserve to make that amount of money. So you really have to start sitting with yourself and be aware, write those things down, but also know that those things that you can reprogram. Okay, the next thing that I want you to start thinking about is 
what action or step are you willing to take right now to demonstrate that you are ready to achieve your goal whatever that goal is whether it's new levels of wealth um, a new career um, become a to win a, a writing competition let's say you're a writer or an artist and um, but what action or step are you willing to take right now to demonstrate that you are ready for new levels and it might be that you start with writing an affirmation putting it on your phone and playing it each night like I did and I gave the example of from myself or it might be even just writing the aff affirmation it might even be about identifying what that goal is you might actually not even have a goal wherever you're at just start there and just remember that those beliefs that tell you that you can't and do can't do things or you'll never achieve your goals that those can be reprogrammed and that you can and you will achieve the things that you want to once you start challenging and doing action taking action such as affirmations um, but once you start working on yourself okay we're going to play one more waiter and um, and then we're going to finish our show and this is a waiata written by my more and they are incredible and the thing that I reason why I chose this song it talks about a whakatauki a proverb and ka whati te hau ka hau ka, oh, ka whati te hau ka pau te tōria when the tide breaks the oyster catcher strikes and this talks about taking the opportunities from my corridor I want you to take an opportunity to start doing things if you have a dream if you have a dream to be something and you know that you have limiting beliefs I want you to take action whether it is that you've you've decided that you're going to start changing reprogramming and you're going to start that by going online and reading and starting to learn about how you can do those things so the song that we're gonna that i'm gonna play my very last song for the day it is called um Doria by my mom
Kia ora whanau, it's your girl Sophronia. Um, I just want to acknowledge um, Mai Moa and um, that was, that's a beautiful song. Um, to, once again, it, I'll just reiterate what it talks about, the toria, the oyster catcher. Um, ka whati te hau, ka pao te toria. It means when the tide breaks, the oyster catcher strikes and it t- and we could say that in another way, seize the moment. Um, for those that have just started listening, my name is Sophronia. This is Mama Epreneur Under Construction. I'm here every Wednesday, 9 to 10 for the next three months. I'm a student of the Kahau I Te Ao e-commerce program and I'll be sharing what I'm learning on my program. Today we have talked about mindset and we've talked about different types of mindset, specifically fixed and growth mindset. We've talked about reframing the past and reframing the past is how we get to a different future. We've also talked about programming that takes place in the first seven years of life and the things that we like are brought into our lives because it's part of of our program. The things that we struggle with are not supported by our programming and ways that we can reprogram is through through things such as hypnosis and repetition. Okay, reprogramming our beliefs and I'm going to, um, this is the, the very last um, part of today's show, um, and but I'm going to be sharing a really important resource that you can take a look at, um, repro- reprogramming our beliefs. As I talked about, the first seven years of our life is when the program, programming is downloaded into that subconscious level. Our attitudes, beliefs and behaviours are based on that time. And 95% of our behaviour is based on that programming. And so there's a doctor, a Dr Lipton, and he talks about ways that we can change the rope, the programming. And Generally, it takes approximately 66 days of repetition to create a new habit, to change your belief, to change your mind. And so Dr. Lipton, he talks about different ways that you can do sleeping, meditation and hypnosis. Dr. Bruce Lipton also has programs uh, and and. If you um, are interested in the different modalities, I'm, I'm going to call them modalities, or different approaches to reprogramming, write this down. This is the website, www.brucelipton.com, www.brucelipton.com, and he has approximate, he has a huge number of different modalities and it's for parenting um, for um, it's about creating change in your mind some of those things um, include NLP and many of us will know NLP but there are some I went through it last night and there are some incredible resources there so if you are serious about reprogramming know that you can especially if that those very first seven years of your life weren't good ones and for some of us that has happened they weren't good times but know that you can reprogram so that you can achieve the things and desires of your heart. So um, I'm going to um, finish by, um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll finish by going over some of the things, or I'm going to ask you a number of questions. And I want you to start thinking about them, start thinking about them, start thinking about them, writing them down in your journal and and you might have to, you know, might need time to actually think about them. But the first question is, what is one thing that you want in your life? It might be, I want to have a house, I want to have my own car, I want to be debt free, I want to graduate with a master's program, whatever it is, what is one thing that you have in your life? 
The second thing that I want to ask you is what conflicting beliefs do you have? So for example, you might want to write a book, but you might have a conflicting um, belief that says, but I'm not clever enough. Or you might have a um, uh, one thing that you want in your life is that you want to make lots of money, but you might have a conflicting belief that says, but I'm not good enough. Whatever it is that you want, whether it's making lots of money, writing a book, buying a house, writing a song, you can do it. And this becomes part of reprogramming so that you can achieve the desires of your heart. Um, that's all for today. Um, Thank you for spending time with me. Just remember, I'm here every Wednesday, 9 to 10, Arrow FM, um, 92.7. We're also on YouTube. If you want to listen to us on podcasts, um, just download the Arrow FM podcast on your device and you can listen to this program and many other programs that are offered through um, Arrow FM. I want to acknowledge them for all the incredible work that they do in our community and um, thank Kia, Kia um, Kue Michael Tene te mihi, tene te mihi. Have a great day. It's a wonderful, beautiful day here in the Wadded Upper, wherever you are. Just remember, if you believe you can, if you believe you can't, you're right. Kaite aro aro kote ma tau
92.7 needs your money. Have you considered sponsoring the program? We have extremely competitive rates and can reach your target audience. You'll have the added satisfaction of knowing you're supporting a not for profit organisation that is dedicated to the Wairapa community. Give us a call on 378 0255.
with mask and puppetry Singing to nobody Standing still, I'm waiting Hopeless dreams, I'm chasing Thank you. 
You're with Arrow FM 92.7, brought to you in association with New Zealand On Air.